Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to your all new program, the, program, the Ummah tonight, where we are addressing, exploring, investigating, sharing with you interesting, relevant, intriguing, and pressing issues facing the Muslim world today. And of course, we are exploring issues from all around the Muslim world, which includes, but not limited to, uh, Kano, Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, all the way to Islamabad, Pakistan, from Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, to right here in Cairo, including also Europe and the Americas as well. We have a very, very special program. But before I begin it, I want to thank Jaiz Bank, the sponsor of this program. If you guys are down there in Abuja, please open up a bank account at Jaiz Bank because they are the first pioneer and premier and entirely Islamic bank uh, doing business in Nigeria. And that is amazing. If you would have told me Jaiz Bank is the first Islamic bank in America, I would have been surprised. But in Nigeria, the most populous Muslim country, subhanAllah, make dua for them. I ask Allah to bless them and increase uh, their, their, their bank in Nigeria, inshallah. Of course, today, I'm joined by my co-pilot, Abu Fawzi. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Oh, Thanks for being with me. Wa barakatuh. Thanks for holding it down with Brother Osama yesterday when I was sick last brother. episode. <laughs> I'm doing a lot better. We did an episode about cold weather. I got sick on that episode, and I just recovered. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Brother Ahmed, before we get into the to the episode, I want to uh, share with you something. We have a very special guest coming up also in the second segment. I'm actually really, really, really excited about it because uh, this this uh, Sheikh has written a book uh, called. The Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger in the Bible, which according to my understanding has sold 120,000 copies on, on Amazon.com. And more importantly, 12,000 people have accepted Islam because of this book. And I talked to the Sheikh earlier. He said he hasn't heard one challenge or refutation from any Christian or Jewish religious figure. So I'm really excited about that. But they got to stay tuned. We have uh, five or six interesting news stories that we would like to share with them. So go ahead, brother, hit it off and let me know what we have first for the viewers. We have the first news here. Stuart, a U.S. engineer, converts to Islam in Saudi, saying he likes seeing people kissing the forehead of elderly. So, subhanAllah, brother, I mean, th we do get a lot of news like this. You know, people, mm. foreign workers, uh, living expats in Saudi, embracing Islam because of the managed behavior the, the of the people. Yeah. So, the but why this, why he, this brother, this man said, now brother, he's a Muslim, now he's our brother now, he said, he uh, was interested in Islam because he saw somebody kiss the, the forehead of another? Forehead, yeah. Uh, I prefer just w we could say the whole news before go we go okay, ahead. Inshallah, go ahead. Okay, and on uh, the MuslimVillage.com, we see a new ambassador of Islam from Latin immigrants. Also, we uh, read uh, that Islamic Center helps needy Texans. Okay. Uh, and from the ADN.com, uh, we see weather service aims to make winter alerts uh, clearer. Right. And from Nigeria, Reuters says gunmen shoot at Nigeria Islamic leaders convoy in Kano. And eventual, uh, eventually, uh, in Beijing, uh, mislabeled halal products upset Muslim uh, Uyghurs. Uh, back to the first news, U.S. Okay. engineer converts mm -hmm. to Islam. Uh, the news say a U.S. technology engineer in Saudi Arabia converts to Islam saying, he was impressed by the way people kissed the, 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 the forehead or the head of their uh, seniors. Uh, Stuart LP, who is uh, 33 years old, a robot engineer at uh, the German Siemens company in the Gulf Kingdom, named himself Omar and went to uh, the mosque in Riyadh on Friday uh, with the Audi friends uh, and some members of the government Islamic Guidance Center. Uh, as we see here, one of uh, the Essex of Islam, subhanAllah, yeah. uh, guided uh, yeah, someone yeah. to convert to Islam uh, easily, without preaching him, without yeah. just saying, okay, and without having a sort, like a lot of people say about Muslims. SubhanAllah, if we look at uh, this news, we will remember a hadith from uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, mentioned uh, in al sahihain uh, and uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Baraka ma'a akabirihim, blessings are with their elders. Uh, and subhanAllah, uh, Prophet Muhammad also so. said about the same issue, Laysa minna man lam yarham sagheerana he is no one of us that he is not have some mercy to our youngers and respect to our elders. elders. And we're going to get back to we're going to continue with this topic. I wanted to just interrupt you briefly, uh, Brother Ackman. I know we're, we're co pilots, we're finding the plane together, inshallah. <laughs> but we do have a phone call from a special uh, guest online uh, on Skype now, a journalist, uh, Brother Noor Adin. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Noor. How are you? Thank you for calling the Ummah tonight. 
Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for having me. I certainly appreciate your time, brother. Uh, please feel free to go yes. ahead and speak about this interesting news story. We have a U.S. engineer in Saudi accepting Islam because he sees the, the practice of Muslim people. I think it's a great story and to, should raise the, the, the iman of Muslims all around the world. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very happy when I read this story and I must say that we are seeing much more of these stories. Um, I think it's very interesting that it's actually news itself. Um, uh, the fact that one person has accepted Islam in Saudi Arabia in this context. Yes, I think that. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, because in a, in a lot of times we see that uh, from uh, from the Middle Eastern countries we receive a lot of support for doing dawah in the Netherlands for inviting people uh, to Islam. For instance, in the Netherlands, where I'm from, or in Europe. But at the same time, there's a very big potential of uh, people who are not yet Muslims who are working in the Middle East. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with reading this news. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, things going on in different countries right now in the Middle East where people are also starting to invite the people that are working in their country yes. and inviting them to Islam as well. I think it's a very positive uh, development, and I think that we should really encourage this. SubhanAllah, I would like to see some statistics to see where do more people accept Islam, foreign workers in the Middle East, or in Europe and the United States. What is your opinion? Well, it's, it's really difficult uh, to get statistics, of course, because the Shahada is not always registered. Um, I see that a lot of high figures, when it comes to Dawa, are currently uh, being uh, re registered from Africa, where you see that with relatively small activities, uh, you are able to gain a lot of Shahadas. On the same time, I was talking to one of the people that's currently working in Kuwait in supporting the Dawa projects over there. And they really, sometimes during Ramadan, I think they did like 2,000 shahadas uh, in one Ramadan in one country. So I think that's really impressive. I also think that uh, from a, uh, when you're trying to do Dawa, when you're in the Middle East, when you're actually in an uh, uh, Islamic surrounding, if you could call it that, I mean, that you get you have the mosques everywhere, you got the Adhan. Uh, that's stuff that we don't have, for instance, in Europe. So in Europe, we really need to bring uh, this religion to the, uh, to, the, to the attention of people. While when people are in the Middle East, Islam and the Islamic culture and the way of living is surrounding them. So yeah. I think that there's a lot of uh, potential there in the Middle East right now. Although, when you're really asking me on where we see the highest figures, I think right now the highest figures are coming from Africa. SubhanAllah. That's an excellent ob observation about seeing the Islamic culture and living it. Uh, great, great point, uh, Brother Noor Adin. Brother Ahmed, go ahead. Brother uh, Noor, uh, uh, as you say, there is a lot of organizations. They, uh, they, they have the, the, uh, uh, the ambition and they are involved in da'wah in either uh, the Middle East or in the West. Uh, Speaking about the individuals' efforts uh, and how they are involved in uh, Dawa as well, I do remember before I traveled to uh, U.S. Uh, uh, and that was the first uh, trip for me. Uh, I asked my sheikh uh, and teacher, uh, "How can I uh, make Dawa?" And Subhanallah, he just told me, uh, "Act." like you are a Muslim, just to be a good Muslim in the community. Do you agree that one of uh, the best ways of calling to Islam and calling to uh, following the way of our Lord is to be a good Muslim in the West? And what would, what would we say to our brothers and sisters in the West? Well, um we usually, when we're talking about this, we're looking at it from the positive perspective, meaning that we're seeing that the best way to uh, explain our religion is simply to live our religion. And of course, when it comes to debating, it really works, because when you're having a debate on Islam, usually people come up with a question that's an obstacle. So they're saying, why is this wrong in Islam, or why is that wrong in Islam, from their perspective, right? But when you're living Islam and you're giving a good example, they will ask you, why are you doing this so good or why are you doing that so well? So it's a very positive start for a conversation as well. However, that's the positive side of what you've just said. The negative side, which we should not forget, is that it means if, if, acting, uh, uh, if, if be, being a good Muslim means doing dawah, 
then it also means that when we fail to do so, we are uh, actually uh, keeping people away from Islam. And I think that's what we need to talk about as well. Because from one perspective, we have the people that are trying to give the invitation and trying to do this on the, on the best possible way. At the same time, we see a lot of people that in their behavior sometimes really give the wrong impression uh, of Islam. So I think that it's, it's, it's on both sides. We need to encourage the good, but we should not forget to talk about where we should improve. And I think that we, that's something also in Europe that we should really work on. Well, that's an excellent point. If I could just get in here real quick before we go to our, our next news piece. I really want yes. to quickly ask you, Brother Noradine, can you briefly talk, perhaps in 30 seconds, the challenges that you are facing giving Dawah or just being Muslim and existing and living in the Netherlands? Because I, 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 from what I understand, you are facing a lot of obstacles put in front of you by racists and bigots, bigots even in the government. Is that true? <clears throat> yeah, of course, in the Netherlands, we have um, uh, some people even in the government. They, they used to be in the government. They're in the parliament now because we had a change of power. Uh, uh, but yes, there's a lot of anti-Islamic uh, sentiments. At the same time, they even though, we, of course, we don't like it that it's there. At the same time, uh, we're trying to make, take advantage of it as much as we can. Right. Um, one of the politicians made a movie which was against Islam, so really anti-Islam, like an Islamophobic movie. But when that movie came out, uh, this was a few years ago, it was called Fitna, maybe you know... Uh, yes, I remember that new story, brother, yes. <clears throat> when, when, when that movie was released, all of our Korans were out of stock. We could not... You know, so all the stock that we had of Qurans, everything was sold. Everybody said, I want to read this book. Everybody says, I want to know about this religion. I am now, I, I, maybe like last year, I was able to, to help somewhere like between 20 or 30 people to, to, uh, to say the Shahada <laughs> and to embrace Islam. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and many of these people are actually saying that because of the Islamophobia, they wanted to know more about it. Yeah, so I'm not saying we're happy with the Islamophobic uh, situation that we meet so often. Which, yeah. by the way, it's not in all cases. We have a lot of good people. We just got a few weird people over here that are really Islamophobic and anti-Islam. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're picking the fruits of it because it puts Islam on the newsstand every day and people want to learn learn more about it yeah, and like see what's really going on exactly like you, as you know as a journalist all press is good press there's no bad press right yeah. <laughs> having said that uh, stay with us Nora Dean. Uh, stay with us from your studio there in, in the Netherlands uh, Brother Ahmed perhaps we can get to the next news story we can yeah. introduce it and then bring in Brother Nora Dean, inshallah Gustav said uh, mi amigo I think <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, from uh, a Latin immigrants okay. uh, from uh, being born in Mexico uh, City to be moving to California and then New York City uh, to be a part of uh, a growing population of uh, immigrants Muslim conversed from Latin America many of them women uh, now helping uh, to uh, being uh, to converse to, uh, from Latin America uh, Help them bring the religion back to their home country. Uh, a lady uh, called Nahla Morales, mm -hmm. uh, she's in, uh, involved now in Dawa, uh, receiving uh, on the hotline uh, 1 800 double seven uh, why Islam uh, uh, questions about Islam, and she's answering it. She is involving with the ISNA um, mission to uh, disseminate information about Islam nationwide. SubhanAllah. Uh, and I believe they're watching video right now uh, of a Spanish Muslim, Latino Muslims in America Inshallah. in their mosque, mashallah. Mashallah, yani, uh, about this news, we just don't say but the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he who is better uh, in speed than who calls for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. to the way of Allah mm -hmm. and uh, uh, did uh, righteousness and said proudly, I am one of the Muslims. SubhanAllah. And this is what I wish we had Hatim Abu Hafsa, our friend from Hood Academy, if he would call in, if he's watching now. He's an expert in Spanish da'wah. Yeah, ha Having to that, if we could briefly go back to Nur if you're still there, Brother Nur uh, if you could give us in 30 seconds your thoughts about this Latin uh, immigrants embracing Islam. This for me is a huge story because I'm from California and it pleases my heart truly, wallahi, to see Spanish uh, Latino people embracing Islam, Brother Nur. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, two sides of the story. First side, I'm really happy always to see this. 
because it proves that Islam is not something which is an ethnicity. Yes. Uh, uh, it's not something from Arabs, it's not something for people from Indonesia, it's something from people from every different background. Now, usually we repeat this, this verse from the Quran when we're talking about the different people and we try to meet each other, uh, but it's always great to see that it's actually happening in real life. So we see that there's a connection between what we preach and what we're actually seeing out uh, outside in the world. So that's very good, alhamdulillah, on the other side. And this is a very interesting time. I think that maybe a few ages from now, we will look back at the time that we're living in right now and see that this is a time where Islam is expanding because of immigration. And it's very interesting to see that also the, the Latino immigrants that come from like Mexico uh, uh, to the United States, accept Islam in the United States, then go back to Mexico and then invite the people to Islam over there. So you're seeing that Islam is now traveling through immigration. Yes. Uh, uh, where of course, this is something like from the last ages that we see. Of course, we've seen this before, but we see it very strong now. Right, and, of course. Uh, you know, alhamdulillah, I see a lot of opportunities. And we just thank God to be alive in a time where mm -hmm. this is going on because it's very interesting and it's, it's I, so I, great to see. Yes, but I can agree with you more. Before we go to the next news clip, Brother Noor, Brother Akhman, I just want to say this is like a nightmare for the American government because the Latinos make up one-fourth, I believe, of the United States population, the yeah. largest immigrant, immigrant group, and of course they reach America illegally, a large amount of them, a high volume of them, uh, through the southwestern border. Yes. So, subhanAllah, uh, may Allah bless them and help them uh, in increase in number, inshallah. Yeah. Go ahead, but what other news do we have? Uh, before to uh, before we jump to the next news, I just would like to yeah. remind our, our brothers and sisters with the verse of uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in uh, Surah Al-Nahl, the bees chapter. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawa'idhati al-hasanati wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu bimundalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadeen. Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good instructions yes. and argue them in uh, a way is best uh, yes. indeed Allah is best knowing to whoever uh, uh, to uh, those Dalla and Sabili he got astray to uh, from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadeen and indeed he is best knowing to the right, uh, those uh, rightly in guided, uh, guided. Uh, the next segment uh, the, uh, in the next news inshallah Islamic Center helps uh, needy Texans uh, that's a nice story what was that Islamic Center helps needy Texans yep uh, we do remember a few episodes before we were speaking about a Competition happened in uh, is happening now, inshallah, in uh, Montreal, yeah. and now we are uh, hearing about an Islamic Center is helping needy. Also, we know about other organizations. They are, uh, you know, like involved in the Muslim community, and the others they are involved in 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 their community in general. Uh, in in uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward all of those uh, for presenting the right Islam and for pre uh, presenting the good image of Muslims and trying to do their best to uh, do what is good in yes, the community. I mean in the heart of Texas as well, mashallah. Yes, uh, Texas as we, we, we know is a big uh, state in America and uh, a lot of people they are following with their news. So the news is uh, saying uh, seeking to help the poor of uh, vulnerable uh, residents uh, of America, second most popu uh, populous uh, state. And uh, Islamic Center is offering medical and coun uh, counseling service. Mashallah. For all the non-Muslim people as well, even though perhaps in Texas we find many many conservative people racist against Muslims and bigots, all the Muslims continue to be generous and help all the yep. needy people. So that's a beautiful p point also. Yeah, as we see here the, uh, uh, in the news, uh, they say the center is offering medical help for low-income residents. Also, they say it also offers counseling services, immigrants, uh, uh, resettlement uh, efforts and programs for domestic violence and women empowering. The center also is uh, also helps resettle hundreds of refugees. Uh, it also 
uh, shoulders uh, the responsibility uh, of teaching native-born Americans about Muslim cultures, Mashallah. as well as correcting misconceptions about and I perhaps, Muslims. Perhaps, perhaps Brother Ahmed, this Islamic Center in Texas giving da'wah and helping needy people is helping uh, Latino uh, people yep. uh, embrace Islam because we know there's a large uh, Latino population there. Before we b bring our, uh, our, our, our Netherlands-based journalist Nordin back in, let's go to the next news piece real briefly that you have. I believe you have something about the, the cold weather front in the <laughs> Middle East. We saw the Majid Abit Amakdis, Jerusalem, under snow. Uh, Cairo is freezing. Uh, I believe in Kuwait they're looking for all-time uh, freezing records. And uh, subhanAllah. So it's been interesting, uh, interesting times, uh, inshallah, regarding yes. uh, the winter alerts. I hope that, subhanAllah. So having said that, let's bring brother. But while you bring that up, brother Ahmed, let's bring brother Nur Adin back into the program. Uh, brother, please tell us a little bit about your 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 specific or, or any specific Dawah movements now trending in the Netherlands. Are you very active, uh, or are you part of any organization that is working to deliver the message of Islam to the people of the Netherlands? We're living in a time where a lot of work has to be done on that level. So uh, any anything we can do needs to be done. So that's good. Uh, currently, I'm a board member for the National Platform of New Muslims, and I'm a volunteer of an organization which is called in Dutch, uh, Discover Islam. So it's called Ondek Islam. Uh, um, uh, one organization, the Dawa organization, is where we really try to invite people to Islam, inform people of Islam. And we say that within that cult, uh, within that uh, system, we try to bring people from a state of disbelief to Shahada. And then we have the National Platform for New Muslims, where we help people from Shahada to Ibadah. So then, as soon as they have accepted the faith, then we put them on the platform with a lot of other converts, and we teach them how to pray, we, we help them during their first Ramadan, and in some cases we actually uh, build teams uh, to make Hajj. Oh, so Alhamdulillah, man. there's a lot of work in this country that, uh, that can be done. Um, we're doing, and we, I mean, the Muslim community in my country is doing uh, approximately like 500 shahadas uh, a year. Of Shukran course, Allah. Allah, Allah guides whomever He wishes. It's not us. We're just happy that we're able to support yeah, this. Allah. And um, we're trying to work on this from various levels. So, uh, for instance, for, for the work that I'm doing, uh, of course, uh, giving lectures, uh, hosting lectures, organizing lectures, but also trying to write... Uh, articles and, and columns and uh, opinion articles for mainstream media and newspapers trying to um, yeah, be able to, to reach out to non-Muslims and uh, get the conversation going. Now, being a convert myself, um, uh, I know what it's like not to know what Islam is like. Right. So that helps in trying to bring the message across and trying to explain to people what it is that we believe, why we believe it. And also try to help them understand that it's not really so different from what they already think or from the values that they already have. Yeah, of course. Trying to explain that what's already good, you will find it in Islam. And what you're missing in your life, Islam will give it to you. SubhanAllah. Barakallah Fiqh, thank you so much for your time. Brother Ahmed and I are always uh, pleased and honored to have you on our program, Brother Nur al And I certainly hope you're available for our next program, inshallah. If you're available, we're ready to host you, inshallah. Inshallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. a nice call. We hope to have him in the future uh, again, inshallah. I believe we're almost out of time, but we had one more interesting story. Perhaps you can hit it real quick before we hit yeah, the break. Before, uh, you spoke about the weather. Uh, the National Weather uh, Service is looking for a few good words to describe winter's worst condition. This is, I'm not <laughs> saying anything about, about that. And uh, now well, jumping to the last... Yeah, uh, I like this last piece you have. Yes, uh, to the last news. Uh, gunmen shoot... And well, actually, let's me, actually, excuse me, the, 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 the halal. The halal, the halal one. one, yep. I'm sorry, okay. yeah. Uh, so this is about uh, mislabeled halal products upset uh, yes, yes, Uyghurs. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting, brother, because, you know, living in the States sometimes, in Europe, you always kind of wonder, okay, it says halal, but is it halal? I don't know. And people say, oh, just say Bismillah and eat it, it says halal is enough. But you, sometimes you have this kind of uh, worry, you're not sure. So th read the story for us if you can. Yes, it's interesting sure. <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah, I thought that was a great story. And, and uh, Beijing Chinese firm uh, labeling homemade food uh, items as halal products imported from Muslim countries uh, to sell the countries uh, we go, uh, Muslim have sparked uh, furry uh, among oh, uh, Xinjiang uh, Muslims who lost their face in Chinese 
companies. Uh, I'll jump to some, some words uh, Muslims said that losing faith, uh, uh, faith in Chinese companies, uh, Uyghur Muslims prefer more expensive products imported from Malaysia and other Arabic countries. So you can trust them. Uh, also, uh, of some uh, uh, Uyghur Muslim youth uh, said, uh, of course, we are going to buy the ones made in Muslim countries even if it is expensive because it's more credible as halal product. Uh, May Allah help to go ahead, but we have about a minute left, half a minute left. Yeah, uh, that's what we got. As, as we say, I, I'd like just to mention a small or a little story. Uh, it happened with me uh, regarding this news. Uh, SubhanAllah, after I went to the States, it was hard for me to find some, you know, halal food and stuff like that. SubhanAllah, uh, there uh, were uh, a friend of mine, he invited me for a restaurant and told me uh, that would be uh, halal food there. Right. There, I asked the waiter if there is any halal food. He told me there is one dish. And when my friend tried this, he just felt it's really delicious. And subhanAllah, it, it was a reason for him to know more about Islam later on because he searched more and more about <laughs> the benefits and how harmful is uh, yeah, the uh, food are not halal or the meat uh, in specific. Yes, that was all of our the news, news today. Allah. Mashallah. Thank you for your time, brother. I look forward to seeing you, inshallah. Uh, next, uh, what is it? Next uh, Monday? Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. okay. I look forward to seeing you there. May Allah help uh, the Uyghurs there and in their the search for halal products and also for, for liberation and freedom from the Chinese regime there. But the okay, I guess next Saturday, inshallah. Are you with me? Inshallah. Inshallah. We're co pilots. We're finding a plane together. So. Thank you. <laughs> sure. You guys at home, stay tuned. We have a very, very special guest. And I really mean it when I say very special because, like I said, this man has written an amazing book that has affected many, many, many people and has helped. Uh, uh, 12,000 people accept Islam. The book is titled, I believe, uh, The Prophet Muhammad, The Last Messenger in the Bible. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to the Ummah tonight. In a game of golf, both the caddy and the golfer have the same goal, to get the ball into the hole. Interest-free banking is similar. With a clear view of the fairway, a predefined agreement without shifting targets, things should end up where you want them. Your deposits are safe and your funds are ethically managed with a transparent and equitable approach to sharing risk and reward. No interest burden means more time to relax without the worry of nasty surprises. Rest assured, our interest is mutual. Jazz Bank, Nigeria's first full-fledged non-interest bank. I've been asked today to talk about the Quran and the modern world. The religion that is acceptable to Almighty Creator is Islam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad The more you know about him, the more you realize how you want to be like him. For every messenger or prophet that Allah has sent, Allah gave him one dua. Allah sent prophets after prophet, messenger after messenger to remind everyone, don't deny the Creator. La ilaha Thee alone we worship and thee alone we seek help. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Never on this planet walked such a person as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Ummah tonight. Like I said, I'm really, really excited. Why? Because we have a special guest. I know I say special guest a lot, but I really, really, this is a special guest because he has written a very, very, um, really beneficial book for Muslims and non-Muslims that is available on Amazon.com. I'm going to let him talk about it before I, you know, I'm t talking too much. Uh, Sheikh Kais El-Kalbi, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Sheikh, to the program. 
Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. I certainly appreciate your time. I'm really excited to have you, Sheikh. Thank you, brother. Uh, when, I, when they told me we're going to have the author of the book, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger in the Bible, I was very excited. Uh, you told me that 12,000 people, by the grace of Allah, have accepted Islam through this book. Uh, so unless you want to start by speaking about something else, I know you have a lot of da'wah activities, which is fine. Or if you want to start talking about the book, go right ahead, Sheikh. Well, uh, reality why the, I wrote the book after my debate with uh, Martin Klin, the president of the Zionism, or also the uh, Edward Decker, the prophet of the Mormons, uh -huh. and Anis Sharroush, who is debating Ahmed Didat, yes. and also the priests and rabbis, etc. Yes. What I find, I read hundreds of books uh, since the Crusade War until now, they translate most Islamic books, but they put the poison inside. Right. Then, in this case, I said I have to write the book, and I put it in the shell of the churches and schools, universities, etc. Then my book included this is my mission for for 30 years. In this case, I wrote it uh, for for seven parts. The part one, God only one and only Savior, and from the Bible. Uh, from Torah and uh, Gospel, right, and also the second, the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third, the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the good occasion. What the occasion? Uh, this is uh, to let Muhammad come, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sallam. the fourth, Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger of the Bible, and also the fifth, the science in the Quran. Six, why they have chosen Islam. Seven, the general information about Islam. Shukranallah. Then. This book being published in 1990, okay, and uh, uh, I put the verses in the Hebrew, in Arabic, in English, Greek. Subhanallah, <laughs> Because anyone who will know this Bible, right. he have to know four things. Okay, the the first, the uh, language of the Bible; the second, the history of the Bible; the geography of the Bible; and beside the history of Islam because all this being revealed in our region, in Arab region, right. in Islam region. Yes, of course. This in this case, who is in Holland, in Italy, in other, other, etc., they did not know the verses and they did not know the history. Besides, and you find the Arabs Christian, they change what related to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they cannot recognize it. Example, in, in Deuteronomy, Nobody wrote about this. In Deuteronomy 33, verse, example, read it here. To see to, to and that. which Bible is this that you have? Uh, King James. King James. James. Your yeah. work with the King James, because we know there's many variations. Yes, right. th that's enough for everybody. And uh, most, in, the, in general, similarity. In similarity. Okay. Okay. Very few words, they change it. Okay. Example, in, uh, in Deuteronomy 33, verse uh, 2, okay. what said? Read it for Go the ahead, audience. Yeah, please. no problem. Yeah, okay. yeah, verse 2. And he said, God came from Sinai, chapter 33. Yes. Uh, verse 2. Uh, and he said, God came from Sinai and rose up from Sair and glorified and shined from Mount Paran with him 10,000 saints. Right. But in Arabic, never said 10,000 saints. Talking about Holy Valley. Did not mean... Nobody ah. can consider. It, nobody can recognize it. Right. This is related to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How, how is it related, Sheikh? How related? Because of Prophet Muhammad, when he opened Mecca, 630 A.D., with him exactly no, mis no mi missing one and no addition one, just ten thousand. You yeah, can read it. Yeah, I actually I can't find the chapter. I'm not familiar with the, the Bible. Uh, uh, well, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 33. Okay, do you, we'll go to Deuteronomy 33, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sheikh, there's many, many. I, I want to get to this De 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 Deuteronomy. I have to give, give very important verses here. Very uh, important. Uh, oh, yeah, I have it right here. And he oh, yeah. said, "The Lord." I'm sorry, Sheikh. Yeah. The Lord came from Sinai mm -hmm. and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, mm -hmm. and he came with ten thousand saints from his right hand. With a fiery law for them. Okay. So, what does this mean then? The, that's Prophet Muhammad related to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he so opened Mecca exactly with him 10,000 companions. So, you're saying the fiery law is the Sharia? Yes. The 10,000 no, no, saints no, were the fire law, fire, reality. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his okay. companion, when he went to Mecca, they went in the Wadi Valley, uh, Fatima, right. and each one he burned fire. Right. Okay, yeah, see, I then see. Then became 10,000. Okay, right, I and see. And uh, also the law with them. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. Now, example, uh, here, when you go, this is this is King James, and there, this is King James. King James When King you go James. in chapter 1, right. Genesis, and also chapter 1, let's discuss this. Very okay. important. Okay. Why? Because if you, uh, if they change this verse, and uh, ch chapter 1, yeah. chapter 1. Genesis verse, chapter Yeah. Verse, verse one. which verse one? Verse one. Oh, the very first. Okay, yeah. Okay, I have see. here Genesis, Genesis one, chapter one, verse what one. In the beginning, yeah. God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. Very simple. 
Yes. What okay. else? Continue. Okay. And the earth was without form and void, uh-huh. and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the God, of God yeah. moved upon the face of okay. the waters. Now this is in 1971. Yeah. Okay. And this is in 82. Okay. What is it? So this uh, 11 years later, yeah. chapter one, verse one. Uh, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss. Why a mighty wind swept over the water. Now, okay. let's see if we go to the logic and right. go also to the language. Yeah. When the Hebrew said what? Riyah. Right. Riyah means wind. Right. Not ruh. Ruh means spirit. spirit. Yes. Exactly. This is in the Hebrew. Right. Now, what is the logic? The earth contain air, uh, contain mud and water and what? And, w- and wind, wind, wind yeah. not spirit. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, right. then in this case, if already, if somebody read it, read it as wind, right. nobody can recognize also the name Muhammad right. being changed in everywhere in the Bible. Okay, then, okay, we can get to that perhaps as well. Yes. Okay, the name Muhammad in the Bible. Uh-huh, name of Muhammad, where yeah. is it? Yeah, in, where? Ha- in Haggai, okay. in Haggai, chapter uh, 2, in Haggai. Chapter 2. Okay, so I'm not sure that is, Sheikh. Uh, uh, <laughs> We're not familiar with the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. In Haggai said, Fiyafu Muhammad kol hajim. That means, uh, I will uh, uh, I will shake all the nation and I will send my, my Muhammad. Muhammad said, yes. because said Muhammad, this is our Muhammad. Hamdudith, or Muhammad. What they can translate it to desire. Nobody can recognize this uh-huh. in the name of Muhammad uh-huh. So wait, this is the name of Muhammad sallam, in the Hebrew language. The language. Uh, yes. And now they translate this in order to obviously hide the meaning uh-huh. and hide the Nobody can recognize this is the name of yeah. Muhammad. He said I will you will read it by yourself Inshallah. and said just put it they put desire and also in Arabic they said uh, uh, they said uh, what I said in, uh, the Arabic ch- Bible also changes this word, of course, as well. The, it said mishtaha. Which means? Mean desire. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Same so thing is. Right, right. So they want to hide the name Muhammad in the Bible, uh, which appears many, many times, Shaykh? Yes. Uh, uh, the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My beloved, my desire, or Muhammad. Uh, yes. Or also, they, they said it in Hebrew, Muhammad, Hamdudith, Hamduth. Okay. Those three words. The three words. Right. Either they recite different recitation. That's the reason I put in my in my book the verses in the Hebrew, in English, yes. in Arabic, and I show them where is the difference. Right. That's the reason now, since in 1990, until now, no single rabbi <laughs> until come and to tell me. <laughs> and beside, beside you find in Deuteronomy 33, yes. when we, we read it already. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say they translate, they change it now in the new Bible, right. say it not... 10,000 saints, 10,000 angels. Doesn't matter, oh. doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Okay. Example, right. in Isaiah, right. in Isaiah 28, I will tell you something, what happened. Right, go ahead. In 28, in verse 11, said, in a summering lips, in another tongue, he will talk to this nation. Yes. But, when I, when I wrote my book, they translated, in stumbling lips, in another tongue, he will talk to his nation. They remove what? V- letter right, T. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the significance? This nation meaning what nation? Nation uh, Jewish, the Israelis. Uh, because in the Quran said in the Surah An Naml, uh, verse uh, seventy six about the Quran and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking. Right. But now I surprise. How come if he's Jesus? How come Jesus he will talk to the Israelis in the different language? Right. right. Why? Right, right. Already he showed them all the miracles they did not accept. Yeah. Then in this case, how? This but now okay. I go with the only one chapter in the, you have to read it by right. yourself also. Yeah. This is where you discuss it. Okay. Important in Isaiah, uh, in Isaiah 29, in uh, Isaiah 29 here, uh, <clears throat> verse 11 said, uh, I think every Muslim who, uh, will recognize it. Who is this guy? SubhanAllah. <laughs> About illiterate prophets. Yes, yes, yes. If you, re- if you find it for me, Sheikh, I will read yeah, I will it. And I believe that most And I will discuss, uh, accept, explain oh, for Yeah, uh, please, please do, Sheikh, because I think... Okay, now in, the, in Isaiah 21, uh, example, they said, the burden upon Arabia, in Arabia, in the liege, example. Yeah. And okay. later we go to the illiterate. Uh, ver- verse, uh, which verse, Sheikh? V- verse 13. 13. Chapter uh, 21. Yes, yeah, chapter 21, Isaiah chapter 21, verse 13. The burden upon Arabia, in the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge. Okay, stop a little bit. What? Uh, the, the Pope 
before this pope yeah. John the Paul, yeah. his in his translation said, God sent messenger to Arabia. After I, I wrote my book, they translated, God sent as again, uh, 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 God sent him prov uh, against. messenger against Arabia. That's a matter. He's yeah. against Arabia, from Arabia to Arabia. Yeah. Then who is this prophet? Yes, upon Allah. And it says, In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O you traveling companions of the da 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 I have no idea. I see. Now, in uh, 2003, when I am in the British, the rabbis, each one, each one has a long Bible, yeah. and I told them, listen, I have a question, 4,000 now, until now you cannot answer it. <laughs> and all the answer already, they might answer the question inside your Bible in the first pa five pages. They said, what the question? I said, the question, any Muslim who is carry the Quran and he did not believe it and did not follow it, he's looked like the donkey carrier. And same things for a Christian and Jewish who is carry the Bible and did not believe it, he is carrier. They said, what the question? I said, the question, very simple. How many wife for Ibrahim? Yes, they said, it. one. How yeah. many child? She said, uh, they said, Sarah. And his, uh, yeah. uh, his yeah. name, uh, Isaac. Yeah, I said, okay, Ibrahim, how many child he has? They said, two. I said the second one is Ma'il from where? From adultery? Sakhfarlaz. That's what they say, yeah? They said no. We call from uh, concubine. Yes. I said Ibrahim never been involved in the war. They said no, no, no. We call handmaid. I went, put, to your, uh, put this mark here, yes, this yes, now, yes. and go in Genesis again. Back to Genesis, uh, yes. Genesis 16, verse 3. I told them, wife, why you tell the people not a wife? Yes. Do you, I'll read it for you, Sheikh. Yes. Uh, chapter 16, verse 3, uh, Genesis. And Sar Sarai, Sarah, Abra Abraham's wife, took Hajar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt tw 10 years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. Right. Thank you. Why are you teaching everybody uh, this is not a wife? <laughs> and already the Bible said wife. So I repeat my question. I told them, I repeat my question. How many wives for Abraham? They said, Okay, we agree, two. I said, to understand the Bible from agreement? <laughs> 4,000. <laughs> I repeat my question, how many wives for Abraham? They said, okay, became clear, two. I said, three. They said, where is the third? I said, in the Bible. Go to Genesis 25. He married the third one, her name, Keturah. And she did for him six children. And which verse is that, Sheikh? The first yes, one. Yes, the first verse, chapter 25. Then again, Abraham took a wife, a wife. And her name was Keturah, and she bare him Zimran, Joshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shuha. Okay. Now Yakshan, Yakshan. Yes. Then his son, his name Dedan. Now yeah. go back again, again to the uh, Isaiah. It uh, yeah. went, uh, oh, where we have the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the Dedan. This is the kingdom for the Dedan. Where is it in Saudi Arabia? In, in, uh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Ah. Dedan. Okay. Yes. Okay. I got you. Now you. to understand, he talking about the battle of Bedr because keep co going. Okay, for in Isaiah? Yeah, no, no, here. Yeah, in Isaiah, yes. Yeah, so uh, it continues in uh, uh, verse 14 of Isaiah. The inhabitants of the land of Tima were brought... Okay, Tima. Yes. I said, what's the Tima? They said, no, no, we did not know. I said, Tima, this is the uh, number nine for child of Ismail. Peace be upon him. When you read in Genesis, uh, 70, uh, Genesis uh, 25 from verse 13 for to 17. He talking about the children of Tema. Tema still exists there. And there is what he said. The, it the, said, the water. It says, brought water to him. That, uh, okay. Yeah, they brought water to him that was thirsty. Okay. No, to, to understand here. Yeah. There is, well, there is well, well there. Very big well. Oh, okay. Well Very known. huge well. And because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he closed when in the Battle of Badr, he closed five, uh, six spring, yeah. then he left one. Then they are thirsty, they take yes, the yeah, Cayman okay. people, they take care yes, of them. Yes, yes. Okay, this is, this is the explanation of the Battle of Badr. The inhabitants of the land of Timur brought water to him that was thirsty, they prevented, yes, so that's the point. That's the point. Okay, yeah, thank now you, let's go discussing about chapter 29. Isaiah. Isaiah. Oh, great. Okay. Mm. I, let me explain first before go you ahead. read. Go ahead, go ahead. He said the book... In verse 11, the book come in the vision for all the prophets who read, who can read and write. Right. And they said, we cannot read it because it's been sealed, sealed for two reason. Because in Arabic and for the last prophet. Right. But the verse, verse 12 said, the book delivered to him for one person. Right. And illiterate, he did not read and write. And the angel asked him, read. He replied, I'm not 
Well, he said in Arabic, ma an, ma, ma na right. He said, I am illiterate or I am I, a reader. Well, okay. Chapter 25, 29? 29. 29, Isaiah, the first verse? Verse, uh, verse 11. Verse 11. Uh, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Like you said, the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, subhanallah, saying, read this. I praise thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. To understand all the prophet in the vision. They cannot, and they cannot read this book. This is not the Bible, because they read the Bible. But only this book in yeah. Arabic, they cannot read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And continue. Uh, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Okay, I asked the Christian, I said, who is the last prophet for you? They said, Jesus. I said, if Jesus, he is God, he has created everything, he cannot read or write, and he sent the books? They said, no, 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 he is reader. And when he teaching the rabbis, when his age 12, then who is... Yeah. Okay, yeah. then let's let finish the Christian. Let's, I asked the Jewish, did you have in your list such a prophet he did not read or write? They said, no. He have to be rabbi the yeah. first. Yeah. Then who is this prophet yeah. cannot yes. read or write? Or he did not read or write and he delivered a book, another different for the Bible. He talking about yeah. a new book. Yeah. Then only this Muhammad, peace be upon, peace upon him. him. Sheikh, this is a, an amazing, because I've heard people bring up some different verses uh, to, to the proofs, but not this clear and amazing like this. This is really amazing. Barakallah, thank you for this. Uh, Sheikh, it's amazing. Sheikh, what do you have here for us? What okay, you this is a, the statue image for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Supreme Court, and I asked the government to remove it uh, and put it instead of it, uh, uh, Quran. Okay, so this is in the Supreme Court in the United States. Yes. Okay. Why, what the reason behind it? What, what, what is the reason behind this? Yes. Well, uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, who is built America, they said, why the Muslims, they are strong in their time, then because they follow up one, his name, Muhammad. So, so then Thomas Jefferson, he said, I take care of this job. Right. Then he read it, the Bible, and he went to his Bible, and he removed anything, he scratched anything related to, against the awareness of God, and he said, La ilaha illallah, the first point, and second, he said, each one person is responsible for sin, yes. and also he said, there is paradise and, health, and yes. fire, then he, he wrote, they called Jefferson Bible. Okay, let's and call the Jefferson also, Bible. Yeah, yeah so and then he became Unitarian, Unitarian, and there is Unitarian in America, yes. and also in Europe. Then the government of the United States, they concern that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they it. make great statue image for him, yeah. and they put it in the Supreme Court, and written what? The philosopher, peaceful, justice, powerful. If you go to the internet, you will find about his. And Sheikh, Sheikh, we have about a minute left, so let's see what we can, I know you have a lot of interesting stuff, let's see what we have. <laughs> what is this, Sheikh? This is the king of British, who is united the kingdoms of British, his name, Rex Offa, okay. in his coins written, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay. And he converts 776, and the British uh, in the museum, and they said, well, he is did not uh, became Muslim, but he is re like the Arabic. I so said, fun. why? He said, La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, the, well, uh, we have made new pictures. Okay, this, this is the Jewish. The Jewish in uh, Sam uh, Sam uh, they call Samaritan, they pray s similar to, to Muslims. This is the prayer of Jesus, and this is the prayer of Moses. This is the prayer of John the Baptist, and uh, etc. And Muslims. And besides, I wrote uh, this is my letter to the Congress. Yeah, and we have and I sent uh, 2,870 facts to them, and I asked them to be Muslim. So, may Allah reward you. Thank you for so much for your time, Sheikh. Uh, we have many, many, many more things to talk about. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But I, I really mean it when I want you to do a program on 100 TV because I think you have hours and hours of, in sure. of interesting material. But uh, before we end the program, can you just uh, let the readers uh, know where they can pick up your books? Yes, they can pick up my book in, uh, in Arabic. In, uh, or in English. In no, English. Sorry, online, in English. Online, online, online. Online or in America or okay. in British. They sell it also. Okay, uh, Amazon, on, sorry, uh, okay, in line. Here they go to that. Okay, Amazon.com. Amazon .com. Okay, and then you have to type in your name. Uh, my name, yes, Kais Al Kalbi. Uh, Kais Al Kalbi, okay. and the book title called Prophet Muhammad, the Last Messenger in the Bible. Oh, thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you again soon on Huda TV, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank Robert. you so much. Alaikum You guys at home, I really hope you enjoyed this really, really exciting episode and look forward to seeing Sheikh Kais here. Uh, on Huda TV explaining this in very thorough detail and you can share it with your non-Muslim friends inshallah uh, you guys until next time I leave you in the care of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh